So good afternoon, everybody. My name is Allison Orman, and I am an admissions counselor here at UNC Wilmington. We are so excited to have you join us this afternoon for our Seahawk Talk, which is exploring academics within the College of Arts and Sciences. And we are joined by our cast expert, um, Ms. Maggie Bannon, and I'm going to turn it over to Maggie to introduce herself, and then I'll just go over a few housekeeping um, rules and reminders as we get started here this afternoon. Thank you, Allison. Um, so as she said, my name is Maggie Bannon, and I am the Assistant Director of Academic Services in our college. Um, I'm excited to tell you all a little bit more about our college in just a couple minutes. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Maggie. All right, so I will turn over screen sharing right now and let Maggie get set up with her PowerPoint. Um, but as she's doing that, just want to give a few reminders. We are in a webinar format right now, so you all are participating as attendees. So your video is off and your uh, microphones are off. However, you do have access to a couple great features that we want to point out. You do have access to a Q&A feature, which is down in the bottom middle of your screen. Please feel free to use Utilize this. We want this to be an interactive session and we want to help you get the information that you need. So if you have any questions during the presentation, feel free to pop them in the Q&A and we will save plenty of time at the end to have a full Q&A. So um, feel free to put the questions in there throughout just so that you don't forget them, but know that we'll have plenty of time at the end to take any and all questions. Um, and at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Maggie and let her get started. She'll go through a presentation. And then, like I said, we will end with the Q&A. So thank you guys for being here. Thanks, Allison. OK, um, so let's first go. And where's my advanced? There we go. Um, wanted to give you all an idea of the College of Arts and Sciences kind of at a glance. We are the largest and most diverse college on campus. Um, so you see here all the many different programs we have. So then kind of I wanted to focus on our mission and I am not gonna read all this, but I do wanna highlight some of the things that really speak to me about what we do. Um, so the first is free inquiry and open exchange of ideas, celebrating all forms of diversity. When you're here, we want to help you foster your create critical thinking, creativity, and adaptability. And we do this through integrating transdisciplinary research, applied learning, and community engagement. And we want you to be thinking about meaningful and ethical civic engagement. And we want to provide a strong foundation in knowledge and skills necessary to flourish in the professional and personal endeavors. And last, create and disseminate knowledge and expression so that you can go out and enrich the world and help address the concerns of our community and beyond. So just to tell, because we are so diverse, we kind of have these what I would call unofficial discipline groups just to kind of help students see where um, the different majors. So these next slides, I am focusing all on our undergraduate programs within um, our different departments, just to give you an idea. So within our arts, you see the different um, majors that we have here. And so um, within each of these, I like to highlight just a couple of things to give you an idea. So when I'm thinking about the arts, I want to just give you an idea of some of the, you know, arts is very much your active performing stuff. So our art history, our digital arts, our films, or our music, and our, our studio art and theater are all in our cultural arts building, which is beautiful. Um, and just to give you an idea, for our art program, it has art galleries, art studios, a graphic design computer labs, printmaking studio, and both digital and um, darkroom studios. For the music, it has rehearsal halls, recital hall, teaching studios, practice rooms, piano and computer labs, and a digital recording suite. For the theater, it has two dynamic theaters, um, fully equipped costume and scene shops, a computer lab, and studio space. Then our creative writing lab is over in Keenan Hall. And a lot of people don't realize that we have our own publishing laboratory there. And so students, there is actually a publishing certificate. Students that are interested in pursuing a career in publishing can get some real hands-on experience as an undergrad. Um, and then film studies, 
Um, we actually now have, it opened this fall, an exciting new film studies building. Um, so our film studies students have access to amazing studios and film equipment, edit labs, sound booths, and a black box studio. So lots of exciting things happening in our arts. Next are the humanities. Um, and so you see some of these majors here. And so um, I like to think of this, a lot of times students will say, you know what, I love, insert any of these majors here, but I don't know what I would do with it besides teach. And so this is my fun, this is my passion. I love to open ideas to students and say, did you have any idea you could do X, Y, or Z? And then they can get very excited. So um, these are some of the ones when they come in and talk to me that I really like talking to. So just to give you an example of where some of these humanities degrees, some of our recent grads are working. Um, we have students in technology, sales, business, nonprofits, law, healthcare, media, education, public relations, government agencies, including FBI, customs and border protection, Federal Reserve and foreign relations. So these things can take you great many places, um, as well as in our classrooms where we need amazing teachers. So for the sciences, you will see this is our biggest group here. Um, and then hoping um, coming soon in fall 2022, we are just waiting for the accreditation. Um, we ho we're hoping we can introduce cybersecurity and intelligence systems engineering as well. So um, highlighting the sciences, we have indoor labs on campus and including um, one of the few on the East Coast that is large enough for marine mammal investigation, including things like big whale necropsies. Um, and then we have labs to do things that I've heard of, but I don't know what they mean. But just to hit on a couple, we have nuclear magnetic resonance, mass spectrometry, geospatial technology, remote sensing and cartography. And the building is still in construction, but we are um, going to have a new engineering um, building. And like everything else, supply chain, um, supply chain is issued. We're having issues with that. But once that comes on board, we're going to have some really cool um, things to do with the engineering building. And then on campus, we also have outdoor learning spaces. So um, we have a, a greenhouse, they have a garden, and we also have a beautiful wildflower reserve that um, students, all students can walk in and appreciate. And then off campus, we have many other learning labs. So one is our Center for Marine Science, which is absolutely gorgeous. And it has undergraduate and graduate students helping faculty with research there. And other researchers from around the world and in the United States will come there sometimes to do the research. And then we also have um, a nature preserve. We have an ecosystem reserve. And there's also a tidal shellfish research area. And then last but not least in our social sciences, um, this one I want to highlight some of the applied learning opportunities that we have. So communication studies, I think it's a fun one because it there are so many different ways you can go with this major. So just to give you an idea that we have a television station that students can help produce television. Um, there is a creative magazine that students can help work on. Um, there is a course called Peer 601, and it is a student-run integrative marketing communication and creative services firm. And so some of the um, agencies in our local area may connect with them that say, you know, we want to update our website. We want it to look fresher. We want to think about social media campaigns. We're wanting to look at rebranding. Um, our office, um, we actually used one of their courses to help us come up with our name. Um, which is now the Academic Resource Center, but we had students and they went through all the different things and gave us some great suggestions. So that's kind of a fun thing. And then our psychology, um, we have our undergraduate students can have opportunities um, in lots of different research areas and also clinical things. So we have an applied behavioral analysis clinic. Um, and then we also have um, applied settings in the Wilmington area through the supervised counseling practicum. And then, like I said, lots of research opportunities. So just as an example, I have a student that is majoring in biology with a minor in psych, 
and they later want to go on and be a clinician and their big interest has been mostly on like eating disorders so we went through yesterday and looked for faculty that that's their research interest and so she's already connected with them to talk about it she's a first year student so lots of exciting options there all right so i will not read all these but i told you we're the largest and most diverse so if you look here you can see there are so many different these are what we call our minor or certificates um, so you can you may have a major and you don't it's not required, but you can see lots of different minors that you could have to supplement your major. And so even students in other um, schools or colleges, they may get a minor in um, College of Arts and Sciences. Okay, so now on to bragging. Um, kind of wanted to look at these are some of the um, I just picked some of the recent awards. So, and I always try to look at a variety of majors. So you'll see the majors on these next couple slides in the teal. Um, but just to give you an idea of some of the really cool things our faculty are doing. With UNCW being a research institution, you know, we are getting faculty that are doing more and more really interesting research and undergraduate students benefit from that. So then talking about some of our students, they are doing really cool things too. Um, so you see a film study student um, with, you know, one at a film festival. And so she's gonna be able to use the money that she got to continue that documentary. Um, and that was all around the political campaign and kind of how our, our country right now is divided. So they're gonna kind of explore that with interviews with people. Um, and then you see an environmental science student who is able to study abroad and he wants to look at different global issues and he wants to connect with other um, professionals in environmental science because he's looking at what he's going to do after graduating. So he wants to connect um, with people there. And then our doctoral student, um, you know, she is one of only 29 doctoral students that were awarded this Coastal Management Fellowship. So she is working with them at our National um, uh, Research Reserve there. So that's exciting. And then last, you know, you always want to think, okay, what am I going to do after I, I graduate? So our alumni go out and do amazing things. So these are just a couple of, we've got a marine biology alum um, that they are doing really good things and trying to help restore our coral reefs. You have a creative writing alum. If you go on um, Amazon and you put in his name, you'll see all the different books that he has um, written. And then this English alum, I mean, she her major was in English. And then she, with the Watson education, she got her secondary licensure. And so she was the beginning teacher of the year. And so she got that education here at UNCW. So now I want to switch gears and talk to you all a little bit about applied learning. And I go back to what our previous dean said um, once, and I just loved it. So I got a quote. So um, he said, applied learning is not just a tagline on the website. It is in our DNA and makes us who we are as an institution. And I love that because learning does not just occur in the four walls of a classroom. So these are just some of the ways that students are getting applied learning experiences. So highlight some of those for you. Um, these are some of the independent studies that students are doing with faculty this fall. I went and looked through our list and I just highlighted a couple here. So um, a lot of times students think, oh, research, that, that's just in the sciences. And just so just to let you know, that occurs in film, it occurs in art, music, communication studies all around the board. So, if you have an idea of a major, I encourage you just to look and see if you see your major on some of these pages and think about opportunities that you might have. So then we're going to go on to internship opportunities. And so on this page, I highlighted some of our internships that do not occur locally. We have a lot of really great local internship experiences as well but um, sometimes students don't realize that they can also look for internships elsewhere. Um, so here's some of the really cool ones that we have. All right, and then service learning um, opportunities. I focus these on our local areas. 
So again, you see a lot of different things that students can do. Um, part of the idea of a public institution is that they are giving back to their community. Um, so these are just some of the ways that some of our students can help and support the goals and vision mission of these agencies and get a lot of really good professional experience while they're doing it. Okay, and so hopefully, let's all cross our fingers, um, we will be able to get back out and doing some more fun study abroad opportunities. So these are some of the summer 22 faculty led programs that are on the books. And a faculty led study abroad means that you go with a faculty and you're usually taking courses that are going to bring back UNCW credit, but you're going to these places and experiencing it. Um, so I'm sure there's some Harry Potter fans on here and how cool would that be to go study abroad the mythology of Harry Potter. Um, and I think that's in London um, and maybe some other places. So just some fun there. And so that kind of wraps up just a really brief overview of some of the really cool things on this page, you will see my contact. So if you want to take a picture of that, um, I love working with students and I love working with students that are thinking about coming to UNCW, be it first year or transfer. So if you, you know, want to connect with me later on and send me an email, I would love to help you kind of make your decision um, about the best place for you. So with that, I think we will turn it over and give you all a chance to kind of make it, as I say, make us earn our money. Um, give us some questions. Yes, thank you so much, Maggie. Yes. Um, and to all of our attendees, we do have a true expert here in Maggie, so please take advantage of that. Um, we, I'm going to start to look here in the Q&A. Um, I don't see any questions that have popped in yet, um, but Maggie, one thing I was wondering about with CAS, do you think you could talk about maybe some of the popular student organizations or clubs that are related to CAS or specific majors in CAS? That's perfect. So, um, because that is something a lot of times our students are looking to get involved. So all of our different majors, if you go on their website, um, you're going to see that they will typically have more, um, some will have what we call honor societies. So you have to have a certain GPA to get in and you're initiated into those honor societies. Um, and then some will have, um, like I was a psychology major. So psych high was really important to me when I was there. It got me involved. It helped me start thinking about, okay, so what am I going to do with this degree once I leave? It connected me more with faculty outside the classroom um, and got to know about some of the research opportunities. And, you know, it was also social fellowship with other students. So each major has some of those. Um, I know within, say, our environmental science, you know, a lot of that they're focusing on sustainability and um, that kind of thing. So a lot of students, you might not even be in that major, but that's a passion, so you could go there. So that is one of the things we talk about students. We want you to leave the institution, not just with the grades, we want you to have those experiences. So that's when we talk about the applied learning or co-curricular. So we encourage you to definitely look at some of those and see where you could get involved because that is where you get more connections and you can network possibly with people say, in the local area involved in careers that are related to that major. It's a great question, Allison. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I am going to put a link in the chat to kind of reference exactly what um, Maggie was talking about. We have a really cool tool on our website that allows you to sort through all of our student organizations. So we have over 300 at UNCW. Maggie hit on a lot of them that overlap with CAS, but if you want to know specifically or if you're looking for one in particular, that tool is really great. And it looks like, Maggie, as you're answering that question, we have questions um, coming down the line. So one I did see um, in particular to honors, I'll go ahead and snag this one. Um, we do have an honors college at UNCW and any major and, and all departments um, have access to the honors college. So there are honors courses across campus. They're not just assigned to specific majors or departments. So um, I'll put the link for the Honors College website in the chat as well. Um, they have a lot of great resources on there. They do have some information sessions coming up. So if you want to learn more about honors, I would definitely encourage you to check out that webinar and they'll be sharing a little bit more. 
Um, the next question I see in the chat, Maggie, um, was specifically about the history major at UNCW. So if there's anything in particular about that major that stands out, such as maybe a class that you know of or study abroad or an organization related to history. Right. Um, so there are, I mean, they're, they're in the building right next to me, but they do have one at their, um, what I would call their foundational course is a history 290 that students typically take in their sophomore year if they know they want to go into it. And that course is going to help you start thinking about what does it mean to do research in history and what are the different areas. So, you know, you have things like students that may want to go into working in different types of museums or students that may want to be looking at restoration or um, oh, what was one that I was helping a student with the other day and he didn't realize. Um, oh, oh, libraries and, and records and things like that. So they have different classes um, and then looking at focus areas. So you may be looking at United States history, European history, world history, um, you know, ancient history or more modern history. Um, there's things like history of science. Um, there's things like history of surfing. Um, so they do have, a, you know, your typical courses and they have some really exciting ones. Um, and then based on the faculty passions, they may have what we call like um, special courses for that semester. Um, so lots of really great opportunities. Um, in the last two semesters, I worked with two history students closely that are really passionate about it and are really excited about their opportunities there. And we've got a lot of history here in Wilmington area. So they're able to connect with the local history as well as others. And then international, when I was talking about study abroad, think about all those opportunities. Um, so yes, they That's would awesome. have, I'm not sure the specific honor society, but they would have an honor society as well. So Christian, if you want to email me, and then I can make sure I can look at that information and send it to you as well and connect you with um, their undergraduate coordinator. If you have other questions. Oh, that's awesome. um, Maggie, I did see these two questions in the chat are kind of related, but I think this brings up a really good point. If a student knows that they're interested in a specific major at UNCW, what would you recommend as far as getting connected to that department? Is it appropriate for prospective students to email professors? Does it just kind of depend on major? Um, what would you advise for those students? Yeah, a lot of times it's probably, it may be a depends. So I encourage you to reach out to me. Um, in our college, all of our faculty, so they are teaching, they are researching, and they do advise current students. So like any, but like everybody around the world now, everybody's doing a little more with a little less. Um, so if you wanted to send those questions to me first, and I may be able to either answer it or um, get that information for you. And then for those of you that are going to be first year students, you are going to, um, you would either start out in our honors college or our university college. And I worked in university college for 12 years. So the cool thing about that is you are with a um, advisor that kind of does that whole holistic advising. So they're helping think about what do you wanna do in the next four years? So I think it's a blank slate. So, okay, so here's now, but by the end of it, you graduate, what are the experiences you wanna think about? So those advisors are gonna help connect you and they know um, about all the different majors on campus as well. Yes, they're wealth of knowledge. Um, I do see some people are kind of switching over to the chat. So if you guys wouldn't mind, it is easier for us if you keep those questions in the Q&A. It looks like there's some duplicates. So I'm switching over to the Q&A. Um, I think the first one that might be good, um, we have a couple specific questions about marine biology and maybe the competitiveness of that program and exactly the pathway into the marine biology major. Okay, perfect. So that is a great question. So there are some majors that are competitive as far as you have to have a certain GPA and they only accept so many students. Um, but in our college, really the only ones are film studies and creative writing. I think of it right now that are competitive, like they can only take so many students because of um, <clears throat> the, the faculty and that kind of thing. And then um, thinking about lab and that, but marine biology, you have to have, um, you know, C's or better in your intro courses, like your chemistries, your biologies, um, in your maths, but it's not competitive as in only X amount of students can be in the program at a time. 
Perfect. Um, this next question, I think, is a pretty good one, um, especially I know we have a lot of first year students joining us or prospective first year students. So, Maggie, what would you say to a student that is not sure what they want to major in right now? If they get into a major, is it easy to switch or how do they really go about that decision process? Perfect. So if again, so if you are a would come in as a first year student um, or a freshman, then that is the great thing about being in university college or honors, because even when a student, so I also part-time advise for honors. Um, and so when I am meeting with a first year student, um, I'm always, they might say, I'm going to be X major. And I'm saying, okay, great. Do you have any other interests? Because I like to do what we call creative advising and start thinking about, okay, well, this course would be beneficial for both of those areas or help them look at their different paths. So in your first years, um, that's what we're helping you do. You're knocking out a lot of your gen eds, but you may also be knocking out some of the 100, 200 or like entry courses for your majors. So we are connecting with you. You're also going to take a seminar course that first semester that is going to help you explore what are your strengths, your skills, your passions, um, because sometimes students come in thinking they want to do one major. And then um, I always say nursing and because you hear that students are like, oh, I want to help people. And then they're like, oh, I don't really like science so much, and I don't think I want to look at blood all day. So helping students feel like, okay, you want to help? What are some other avenues you can go? So you're going to have that great support. For transfer students, um, if you're not sure, then um, you know that's something that, again, you can reach out, and I would be more than willing to talk to you about that. Um, but usually, you know, it depends on how many hours you're transferring in with. Um, but help students kind of look at what might be their best path. Um, and then a lot of you all are at our um, community colleges in North Carolina. So if any transfer students are thinking that right now, I encourage you to reach out to the UNCW counselors that um, connect with your campus as well, because they would be a great resource to talk to about that. Perfect. And I do just want to emphasize from an admissions perspective, for any of you that are first year students, um, and I see this question right here in the chat about applying for a specific major. And I do just want to emphasize for first year students, when you apply to UNC Wilmington, we are considering you for general admission. So you are more than welcome to tell us about your intended major. It's a great way for our admissions committee and admissions counselors to get to know you a little bit better and understand why you might be interested in UNCW. But at that point, you are not locked into that major. Um, we give you that first year, like Maggie said, to get adjusted to being in college, take a variety of courses, and then most students are going to start out in their major around their sophomore year. Mm -hmm. um, so this next question, um, we do have a question about um, the Center for Marine Science, Maggie, and maybe how students can get involved um, at the Center for Marine Science, maybe how early that could happen. Okay. If I think I'm looking at the same one, said, so um, is it from Lucy? Is that okay? Perfect. So you're talking about applied learning. So let me say that um, for both first year and for transfers, um, we have applied learning experiences. There is your second semester. Um, there is a course. It's called Honors 191, um, but you don't have to be honors to take it. Basically, it's an intro to research course. So this is something if you're like, oh, I think I want to do something like that then you, we want you to, as soon as possible to be start making those connections. That's why I told you about that first year honor student that she's gonna go ahead and make that connection so that she can look at, are there things I can do maybe my sophomore year and then keep going. So, and then study abroad students, um, there are sometimes, and, and I don't know necessarily with COVID, uh, but hopefully once we get around this, um, that students can study abroad the, the spring break sometimes for a really short trip or you can study abroad starting the summer after your first year. Um, internships, there is um, students typically for an academic graded internship, you're a junior or a senior, but you can often do what I call unofficial internships before that. And I always tell students that you just want to talk with somebody about how to make that the most meaningful. Um, so there's lots of, we want you applied learning service, um, learning. We want you out in the community. We'll actually have different days that students, um, and we'll actually organize it so students, where there's a community farm that will often have days that for our leadership office will call out and say, hey, we'd love students to volunteer to come help at this agency and that kind of thing. So applied learning, you can start from the get-go 
but some of them it's a little bit, um, you'll wait a little bit. But like I said, research, if that's something you're passionate about, talk about it with your advisor as soon as you get here. Yeah, great. Um, I'm going to combine a couple of these, Maggie, because it seems like we have a similar pattern of questions, okay. which looks like we have a variety of different interests from our attendees on different majors. Um, and I think students are wanting to know more about the specific major of their interests. So can you talk a little bit about maybe some resources that exist or program websites and how you would recommend prospective students kind of navigate those resources that are existing so that they can learn a little bit more about their major okay. of interest? Yes. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> first, the biggest resource that you'll have, like I said, that first year as and again, for first year students, you'll take um, a freshman or an honor seminar. And part of that is going to help you explore um, our career center on campus. You know, back when I was in school, I didn't reach out to our career center till my senior year. Um, that's not what you should do. You should be using them. Um, they talk about like your first year, second year, third year, fourth year, there's different things to do with them. Um, and so that first year, it could be exploring those things. So on their website, when you click, if you go to the Career Center and for students, there are actually things that you, there are some things you wouldn't be able to access until you're a student, but there are some general, like here are some of my interests. There are some things that you could start looking at now um but we are definitely going to help you with that later and then our undergraduate catalog that is where it lists all the different programs um, that the university has and so that will show you what courses are required and the really cool thing is that with technology um, it's all hyperlinked so if you see an, a certain course and you're like that sounds cool you can click on it in that catalog and you can see what the course description is so if you're like excited about exploring, you can look at the department websites, the undergraduate catalog. If you're unsure about a major um, as a first year, that's not a bad thing. I say that because I came to school wanting to do psychology. I was Pell Grant and I knew I had to, you know, be cognizant and do what I need to do to get out in four years um, because of finances. And I never explored anything else. And then later, I obviously my psychology is good for what I do now, but later I heard about other majors and I was like, oh, I might have done really good with that. So in some ways it's good to have an idea, but not to be like, have those blinders on. We want you to like explore some of that option. Perfect. I see a couple admissions related questions in the Q&A, so I'm getting to those. Um, I did see a really awesome question that brings up a um, opportunity to share a cool tool that we have through our career center. Um, I see someone asking about what kind of careers can lead yeah. to blank or whatever specific kind of major. Mm -hmm. And I do, I'm going to go over to the chat and share a really cool resource. Um, this is a tool called What Can I Do with a Major In? And I show this to as many prospective students as I can because I think it's a really helpful resource. Basically, our Career Center has gathered together information related to all of our majors on campus. Each of these majors you'll see is hyperlinked, and when you click on a specific major that you're interested in, you're able to see a breakdown that includes a description of what that major is, um, some recommended career paths or some common career paths. And then also there's a part um, that lets you know what kind of skills, interests, or talents would be a good fit for this major. So as many of you are, are having a variety of um, interests and things that you're checking out, I think this tool is really helpful um, to meet you in that and allow you to explore a little bit more um, of what all we have um, across campus. And while she did that, I also put the other Career Center page that kind of talks about all the different things that they can help with. And that very first part that talks about exploring careers, it will have that, what can I do with a major in and others? And I will say at my previous institution, I had that page marked. So even before I worked at UNCW, I was going to their website. Yeah, that's a great point, Maggie. I think that that resource is really universal. So it's not even specific to UNCW. It just gives you a great overview of different um, majors and, and fields um, for careers. There is a couple questions related, or there are a couple questions related to scholarships. And so I do wanna touch just generally on that process. If you are a first year student um, or a transfer student and you um, have applied to UNCW, 
And um, for first year students, you will receive your decision um, in early action around mid January. If you are accepted to UNCW at that point, you would have access then to our scholarship application. And basically this is something we do encourage all admitted students and current students to complete. It is essentially the way that you can be considered for over 600 different scholarships that our financial aid office um, awards. Basically all of these scholarships cover a variety of different areas. Some of them are related specifically to majors or academic departments. So if you are involved in a major or interested in a particular major at UNCW, you'll be able to identify those questions on the scholarship application, and that is how you can be considered for those. So the nice benefit is it is something that you can fill out every year that you're a student at UNCW. So we do tell students that as you get more involved on campus or get more connected to your major, there are potential opportunities for scholarships that could continue to open up for you. So I want to add that um, to the undergraduate catalog that I talked about a minute ago to explore what what majors we have at UNCW. I put that link in there as well. And then I see a um, question from Colin about freshman programs. So yes. Um, and this is, uh, I will say holistically all the time, because that's what I love about UNCW. So you're going to be um, living on for those of you that aren't local, you would live on campus. And so there are gonna be programs within the residence halls to help you get connected. You're gonna take that first year seminar course. There are gonna be activities specifically for you. During orientation, you're gonna have um, what we call an orientation leader that will get you in small groups. So a lot of students wanna say, how did you meet? They're like, oh, I actually met so-and-so during orientation, we were in a small group together. So we are really focused on helping you transition. For transfer students, we have what we call the Teal Bridge, and we have Teal Bridge mentors that help get you acclimated as well. And then the transition programs have specific programs for transfer students. We have a lot of um, adult learners, and so ways to get them connected with other students who may have um, children themselves, and so that you can find what I call your people, so that you can kind of learn and grow with each other. Um, it looks like there's one more um, question that I see in the Q&A. Um, can you declare your major if you come in with college credits and meet the requirements as a freshman? So Maggie, could you talk a little bit about, I know you have a lot of advising experience, uh, maybe what you've seen in the past with students that bring in credit, AP or honors, and maybe what that looks like for them? Okay. So um, if you come in as a first year student, you will start at least your first, most students will be at, with University College or Honors for at least a year. Um, some students that say are um, early college that come in with a lot of credit, if staying with a professional advisor um, and not in their department is going to be hold them back, or if they do really well their first semester, knock it out of the fall park, have a great GPA, feel comfortable going into their major, then we do make exceptions at that point. But typically, they students stay with us. Well, I say us. It's, it's hard for me to give it up. Well, I have honors now. Um, but they stay with that person for that first year because that first year is a lot of transitions. And sometimes a student tells us in the fall, I want to be X major. And maybe they didn't take that intro course in that major. And so if they declare and then they're with um, you know, their department and then they take that first course in the spring semester, like, I don't want to be in that major it's better for them to stay with um, a professional advisor who knows something about all the other programs. Because once you're with a faculty advisor, they're like, I don't know about that major. So we don't want you kind of jumping, jumping, jumping. We want to give you that strong foundation. So it will not, we will make sure it will never be detrimental. Most of our majors, um, there's not going to be any course restrictions for courses you would need that first year. Transfer students, um, except for some exceptions, if you don't meet some of those um, entrance requirements, you're going to go directly into your major. Super helpful. Thank you, Maggie. It looks like we have cleared out all the questions from our Q&A. So Maggie, thank you. All that information that you shared is so helpful. Um, we really appreciate you being here with us this afternoon. I'll give it just another minute or two. And while I'm doing that, um, I'll put my information in the chat as well as um, actually I will put 
our link for our admissions counselor contact information. If you have questions about your application or you're in the process of applying to UNCW, um, we're happy to help you with any of those things. We do want you to get connected um, with your admissions counselor. So uh, Maggie has put her information um, in the chat as well as it's on the screen right here. So feel free to take a screenshot or take a picture. And then here is the link if you need to get connected with your admissions counselor. But we really do appreciate you all being here this afternoon to learn a little bit more about the College of Arts and Sciences and the great opportunities that lie within the College of Arts and Sciences. So um, like I said, we're here to help you and we're so excited that you're interested in UNCW. We hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you guys. Bye.